2020 marked the start of the decade of action to deliver the Sustainable Development Goals. And we know the ocean holds the key to an equitable and sustainable planet. To reach these goals, and more specifically, SDG 14, international ocean governance will play a central role. With clear objectives to be achieved in less than eight years now, strengthened multilateralism and coordinated international action are critical to adopt and implement ocean-related policies, ensuring livelihoods for billions of people in coastal communities and seeds that rely on a healthy ocean. There are a number of issues to overcome in policy negotiations, such as unequal power between member states, unequal access to information and data, lack of capacities and resources. Balancing ocean production and protection can be complex. Understanding what is at stake when negotiating is essential for member states to make informed decisions that are in their best economic and social interest while ensuring the sustainability of these resources. These problems highlight the need for technical assistance and capacity transfer for less developed or more vulnerable member states. I see two ways of approaching capacity development. Firstly, a bottom-up approach to empower communities and influence policy. For this approach, it is essential to present facts and data to stakeholders with less resources who depend on the ocean to build their competences using available tools, technology and information. By doing so, these stakeholders, particularly those less heard, such as women and indigenous communities, can in turn raise their voices in decision-making processes, influencing policy outcomes that matter for a healthy ocean with a direct impact on their livelihoods. Secondly, a top-down approach to better inform member states about the impact ocean health has globally and locally for their own economy. Developed countries have a duty to help developing countries, in particular seeds, to gain the knowledge and technical skills influencing and defining policies. Institutions such as the International Ocean Institute, UNCTAD, UNEP and UNESCO Ocean Decade, among others, are also well placed to build the case for member states to take informed decisions in ocean policies, moving towards a sustainable blue economy by managing production, while also fully and highly protecting at least 30% of the ocean. The science shows that fully and highly marine protected areas remain the best tool to conserve biodiversity and ecosystems, improve long-term food security, and protect ocean-based livelihoods. 2022 is a critical year for ocean governance, with many policy discussions scheduled, such as the World Trade Organization's 12th ministerial meeting, where ministers will negotiate to end harmful fishery subsidies. I urge member states to conclude these negotiations and build consensus, thus achieving SDG 14.6. Paving the way to a more inclusive, resilient and sustainable world will depend on decisions and actions we take. Balancing national interest with the management of the ocean as a global common is the only way to successfully advance the SDGs, in particular SDG 14, life below water, but also SDG 4, quality education, SDG 5, gender equality, SDG 13, climate action, and many more. Collaboration is crucial, and together, we can achieve many positive outcomes for people, the economy, and our planet's health. Saving our ocean is really about saving ourselves. Thank you. <laughs>